When I was younger, we didn't have anything. We didn't have much, we were poor. But we may do with what we had. My mom, she would tell me that, you're not going into the streets, you won't be another statistic. I didn't understand it when I was younger. As I began to grow up, you started to see what a statistic actually was. I promised my mom that she would never have to pay for college. My mom was so worried about my education, making sure that I get into college, figuring out how she get the money to do it. But I promised her, like, mom, like, you never gonna have to pay for me to go to college. Eyes up, heels up, get it to 10, I was an extrovert guy. <laughs> my brother and me would go running all the time, in the morning, in the, in the afternoon, late night. Even when things happened in the wrong way at home, that was an escape route for us to go running. Cones in the front yard, <laughs> do all type of crazy stuff. We run sprints in the street. I was pretty driven at a young age. I just seen an opportunity. I still see opportunity, so I'm just chasing it. I ran track, I ran four by one, four by two, two shot and disc. When I was younger, I was kind of a smaller guy, so they couldn't think I could do it, but I would shot people when I would do the field events like disc and shot. I was a little guy. Everybody else around were retiring me. I knew how explosive and powerful I was. I think there was things that contributed to me being explosive. It's me and my brothers playing and wrestling, really. They were always bigger than me, so they had to get them up off of me. <laughs> So I found ways and that fight and that ability to just keep going helped my explosive different power. You know? When I first got into Boy Scouts, actually, uh, I didn't want to do it. I thought it was lame. Thought the kids around me wouldn't think it was cool. At first, I, I dreaded it. I hate going to camp. I hate doing popcorn. I hate doing it all. But as I started to go on with it and doing camp and um, doing other things with other kids doing outdoor things. I started to enjoy it. You learn so much about health, uh, survival. You learn so much about leadership. Being a Boy Scout, to become an Eagle Scout was a, an experience that I needed for me in my life that brought me here to this point and also influenced my mindset and the way that I carried myself every day. The recruiting experience uh, was very uh, exhausting, miserable. <laughs> I valued my worth higher than what it was. I wasn't ranked very high. Well, going into my junior year, I know I had to have a big year. I had a big year in the following off season. I was like, okay, offers should be rolling in. I thought wrong. So that off season, my junior year, I just killed it every day. Um, just killing myself. I ain't taking no time off. Go to training at the, one of the best training facilities, if not the best training facility in Cincinnati, the Art of Fitness. Um, just going there and kill it every time I could. Just making sure I left everything out there, left nothing in the tank. I go home, I throw up at the workouts, I go in the car, stop, my mom had to stop the car. I'm throwing up, because I'm just going. I'm like, I'm just so driven to make sure my mama don't pay for college. The will for me to go down grew um, as far as running the ball. It wasn't easy for people to tackle me. And I took confidence and I took a lot of pride in that. Senior years, I took off. Numbers were crazy, so in that offseason, I still didn't get the offers in. And I was like, what's the formula, what's the recipe? And at that point, I didn't want to give up, so me and my mom started to go like different sites to where they can help me with the recruiting. That didn't work. They were just taking all my mom's money, so I said, Mom, just stop. <laughs> After that happened, Iowa State comes, like, boom, I want to offer you. We're taking official visits, beautiful, amazing place. I'm able to handle a lot more. Got bigger, stronger, and faster. I spent plenty of times, Coach Campbell tried to lock the facility to where I couldn't get in, but I found a way in. I'll come in that late night. Just was one, I wasn't a party guy. I didn't really go with the hype. I was okay with doing things by myself. And standing alone to do things that I needed to do to improve myself. Earlier before the season, I would work on my footwork to clean all of that stuff up. Then I would work on my power and explosiveness, like pulling sleds and just trying to get better with being more explosive. Anything that would improve my, my game, I would do. I'm trying to take it another step so I could show myself and show the world what I could do. There were times where I'd call them at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning trying to get the 
password for the film so I can watch the, the film as far as the practice I had that day or what I needed to know the next day. Four or five years ago when I was watching film, I was watching film of me. Like it was more like highlights. I wasn't really paying attention to what I wasn't doing well. But I grew like a fond understanding of, that I had to pay attention to the things I weren't doing well because those matter more than the things that were going well. The biggest thing was for me to go out and have fun, first and foremost, but two, being able to take every rep and every play as serious as possible. So sometimes it's hard to do the two. Being able to remember that the game that I play now is a game and it's supposed to be fun. But when I took it serious, I took it serious. So that competitive drive and that nature that I had, I just wanted to get better every day. And knowing that I had potential to be better, and I still got potential to be better than, way better than what I am right now, just like, okay, it's another opportunity to tackle today. Let's go get better, 1%, 1%. I don't need 15, 25%, I don't need to, you know, let's get 1% better. Just focus on getting better every day and making the people around me better. You know, if I'm not making everybody else around me better, what am I doing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? The biggest ritual is I pray. I go to the football field before everybody comes out. It's just me and God in open air. And I take a knee on the S in Iowa State in the back of the end zone, and I say my prayer. I love football today because it changed my life, uh, saved my life, helped me. I'm not supposed to be here if you let everybody else tell it. God knows I'm supposed to be here, but everybody else don't think I'm supposed to be here. I'm Dave Montgomery, this is my path to the pros.